What's up everybody, this is John Raymond and I'm here in my home studio practice space. We like to call this space the workshop because I can just kind of go out here, get away from the kids when I need to and just work a bunch of stuff out. And we're here talking about a whole bunch of things related to jazz and improvisation. And today we're gonna get into some stuff about chord changes. I find that there's two camps of people generally with chord changes. One is there's some people that have a really hard time memorizing chord changes to a song and understanding how they all fit together. I also run into a lot of people who maybe they do a little better with memorizing chord changes to a song, but then they go to play and they sound super stiff and whack when they're trying to play over a tune. So you don't want to be either of these people, obviously. And so let's get into three things that we can talk about with chord changes specifically. One is how we should go about learning a song right, and, and how to really understand it from a more global perspective that will help you memorize chord changes to a tune. We also need to know or when to play these chord changes literally or when to play them a little more abstractly or broadly. So we can talk about that too. And last but not least, we got to talk about what the process is when you're learning chord changes to a song, but then you actually go into a real musical situation how do you think about chord changes then? Because it's not the same as it is in the practice room. Okay, so first, let's dig into how to learn chord changes to a tune, right? Instead of learning chord changes where you try to memorize a certain chord, this chord is D minor, this chord is G7, this chord is F major, etc., etc. Don't learn chord changes that way. Right? Instead, learn everything in terms of how it relates to a broader key center or like a home or like a certain environment that the song lives in. Right? Pretty much every song that you're going to encounter, even things that are fairly contemporary, modern sounding, they have a home base. They have a key center. You just have to figure out where that home base is. Right? And how do you do this? You can do it a couple different ways. You can do it just by hearing the song and going with ears first rather than thinking about the theory, right? A lot of times that's going to tell you where that song wants to sit, right? You can also think about it from a theoretical perspective too. And what you can look for a lot of times are two five ones, right? You can see from where those chords resolve that that is a home base or that's an important moment in the chord changes, right? But with all of this, even as you're learning chord changes, what you have to do is think of everything again in context of that one home key center, right? So what I tell students all the time is learn chord changes in a way where you're thinking of them in Roman numerals, right? So you're not thinking of them in certain letters or whatever, because you, then you're just going to get everything jumbled together. And, and especially if it's like the tune gets called in a different key, you're going to be way lost, right? So you have to think of all the chords in terms of how they relate to each other. So if you think of a song having the key center as the one chord, right? Then you'll be able to see, okay, now we're doing a two five progression to the four chord, or now we're getting into the minor six chord, or now we're doing a backdoor two five to get back to the one, right? You see what I mean? All the chords that are in a song relate back to where that home base is. So as soon as you can figure that out, that's going to help you put everything together and see it all in context of that home base. Okay, so now you've got all the chord changes to a song memorized. How do you know when to play all those chords literally outlining each chord change or when not to, right? A great example for this would be the song Autumn Leaves, right? So you put on Autumn Leaves, you're playing over the chord changes. You know that if I'm thinking of the song in G minor, first chord is C minor seven, then we got F seven, then we got B flat major, E flat major, etc. right? If I want to create melodic lines that outline each of those chord changes, then I do have to play them literally, right? I have to, have to make it very clear based on how my line is resolving and, and where it's leading into how these chord changes fit together. But you can also think of this tune very, very simply as just like the first four measures of the song are in concert B flat major, and then the second four measures of the song are in G minor, right? 
There are other chords there, of course, but like go listen to, to Miles play over this on Cannonball's something else record, right? You can hear him thinking very clearly C major, or sorry, I'm thinking trumpet key, think of B flat major concert, right, for four bars, and then G minor for four bars. B flat major for four bars, G minor for four bars. He's not playing all the chord changes. So if you've been told you have to play all the chord changes, that's not necessarily wrong. But again, you have to think about what are you going for musically, right? Are you trying to outline each of the changes or are you trying not to? You have to be intentional with either choice. So that's when you would know when to play them literally or when not to, okay? Last but not least, You've got all this stuff worked out. Now you get into like a real musical situation. You're at a session with some friends. You're on a gig, whatever it may be. How are you thinking about the chord changes? And it's kind of a trick question here because really you shouldn't be thinking about the chord changes. If you're thinking about the chord changes when you're actually trying to make music with people, you will sound horrible, I promise. <laughs> and it's because your brain can't keep up with thinking about what all the chord changes are without getting either behind or making you sound super stiff. And at the very least, you definitely won't be listening to anybody else that you're playing with, which is gonna make the whole experience for everybody else pretty lame. So you don't wanna be that person, okay? You have to do all that homework and all that shedding in your own workshop of sorts. You have to get that together on the piano, on your instrument, work all the stuff out in terms of how you learn the chord changes. But then when you get in the moment and you're playing music, you can't be thinking about any of that. You've got to trust your ear, right? And this is the analogy I like to give a lot of students. Like imagine like you are going on a trip in a car. You got point A, point B. You've taken this trip a bunch of times, right? You know how this trip goes, but you might have a slightly faded memory of like exactly which turn to take and when to take it. So you pull out Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever you got, you type in the address, and now you all of a sudden have a navigator that's helping you and directing you as you are on this trip. Is the navigator driving for you? No, you're driving, right? The navigator is just kind of steering and guiding you, but you pretty much know the way, right? Because you've done it before. This is how you want to think about changes when you are playing music with other people. That homework that you've done internalizing the theory of the chords and how they fit together and how they sound and what they are, how they feel and how they lay on your instrument, whatever it might be. You have to do all of that. But then when you get into that musical situation, all of those things, they become like your navigator, right? Like your GPS. They're not driving. Your ear is driving. And what you're listening for is you're listening for melody. You're listening for where that melody wants to go. And you're also listening for where does the music want to go, right? Listening to everybody else. How does this fit in context, right? And that navigator is going to help you so that you don't get off base and start to do weird things with the chord changes, right? So you can stay in the path of the song so that you're always going to live in that zone, right? So, bottom line, when you're going to play with people, don't think about the changes. Please, for your sake, for their sake, don't think about it. You have to trust your ear, trust that preparation that you did, and let any of that thinking just be a guide that's steering you and navigating you in the right direction. So, I hope these things have helped with thinking about chord changes. And I, uh, I hope this can be something that you can apply in your own practicing, in your own musical situations. Feel free to always reach out to me. Drop me a line if you've got any questions. And we'll see you next time.